Hi guys, welcome. This is module eight. We are gradually coming to an end of the theoretical course and we'll be getting to the practical course shortly. The last two classes are uh, to explain um, how to calculate your formula in percentages or to turn your recipe into a formula and basic equipment you would be needing because that is very important, right? Especially if you want to start out small and you do not have the resources to buy the big equipment or the expensive equipment. I have made the list of equipment you would be needing and the ones you can easily find in your home that you can make use of till you can afford to buy special equipment for your cosmetic formulation. Okay, let's just get right into the class for today. Uh, like I said earlier, today's class is uh, on good manufacturing practices. Guys, We can I cannot overemphasize uh, the need for practicing good manufacturing. Good manufacturing. This is under product preservation because when you practice good manufacturing, then your uh, your your product shelf life will be long, right? Uh, adding a preservative to your product does not uh, is not only what you need for the uh, product to have a long shelf life. You need to practice good manufacturing. This includes covering your air, wearing gloves, and uh, just. Uh, wearing and okay i already said covering your hair wearing gloves covering your nose because you know uh from the fumes let's say if you're working with sodium hydroxide or just uh for basic hygiene so you really need to uh disinfect your work area with uh 100 alcohol or so you can just spray your work area so you're working from your kitchen or on a table, on a slab, you can uh, have a spray bottle with 100% uh, uh, alcohol and just spray the area and then wipe with a clean towel or a clean paper towel. Also, you need to disinfect all your, all your equipment, sterilize your equipment. So you can disinfect your equipment by also spraying alcohol and then using a, a dry towel to clean your equipment. Also, you could wash your equipment with uh, bleach mixed with water. So you can do a 10% uh, bleach and 90% water. So for example, if you are, if you have maybe a 10 liter bucket and you're trying to make a 10 liter bucket of bleach water solution to disinfect your your uh, equipment that would be uh one liter bleach and nine liter water so that is a 10 to one that is a nine to one ratio good manufacturing practices which is gmp helps to ensure the consistent quality and safety of products by focusing attention on five key elements okay so uh Nobody wants to buy a product that smells differently or looks differently every time you purchase. So good manufacturing practices helps to ensure that your product is the same every time. And this is why I will be teaching you how to come up with your own formula so you don't have to rely on using one spoon of this or two spoons of that. So you can always have uh, be confident in your formula and have a... Uh, consistent product so your your product smells same it feels the same the viscosity is same every time you make a batch from batch to batch whether you make a batch this year or you make a batch next year of the same formula it is going to remain the same so this topic good manufacturing practices like it's um, it's almost a old book so i have like an ebook of about i think three to five pages on good manufacturing practices. Kindly send me an email and I'll be sending you the e and I'll be sending you the ebook 
this ebook is free it is not paid for the only reason why i do not i, I do not have it here is because it's a long read right and we cannot cover everything in a short amount of time okay so good manufacturing practices focuses attention on five key elements which are often referred to as the five p's of gmp first is people second is premise third is processes the third the fourth is product and the fifth is procedure this is explained um, in depth in the ebook i will be sending to your email okay so next i want to talk about choosing the right preservative i think in the last module that is module seven i spoke about choosing preservative according to the ph or according to the product you are working with so if you're trying to make maybe a liquid product let's say a face toner it makes sense for you to use like a water soluble preservative and a preservative that has its ph within the range of the ph of the product and a preservative that is broad spectrum okay so um you get to uh understand this better when we get to product formulation which is just two classes away so i'd like you to stay tuned okay ph is an acronym for potential hydrogen ph refers to the quantity stroke amount of hydrogen in a product it is the measure of how acidic or how alkaline a product is it is worthy to note that only water containing products should have their ph measured so you cannot measure the ph of an anhydrous product remember in our in the class where we discussed uh, common cosmetic terms we spoke about different terms and parts of those terms was anhydrous so anhydrous products are products that do not contain any water you cannot measure the ph of any product that does not contain water right so uh you measure a ph of your pro the ph of your product using a ph meter or as a newbie if you do not have a ph meter you will be making use of a ph strip i will be showing you pictures of these in our basic equipment class so that you can know what to purchase when the time comes but uh in the long run you'd need a ph meter right because if you are looking to formulate products with uh exact ph so for instance you're trying to formulate a vitamin b face serum a vitamin b3 face serum vitamin b3 is only uh, uh stable at the ph of six so how do you determine the ph of six without using a meter there's no way you can do that right because the paper just shows you the ph paper only shows you color that's the ph strip the ph strip or ph paper only shows you colors so you use the color to determine what range it is you kind of like eyeball it but for some product you need to uh for the ph of the product to be an exact number so for this product you need a ph meter when we get the uh to facial product formulation you will see what i am talking about so for you to increase the ph of a product you make a sodium hydroxide solution so uh you make a 50 percent sodium hydroxide and 50 percent water that makes a sodium hydroxide solution and then you add it in drops into the product until you get to your desired ph i'm going to demonstrate this when we get to our practical classes uh same goes for decreasing the ph of a product so uh, although lactic acid is uh, you can buy 70 percent lactic acid is already in liquid form though they are powdered lactic uh, lactic acid glycolic acid so if you're making use of the liquid lactic acid or glycolic acid you do not need to add water but if you are making uh if you are making use of powdered lactic acid or glycolic acid or citric acid you need to make a solution out of it so you make a 50% citric acid 50% water 
or 50% lactic acid, 50% water, or 50% glycolic acid, 50% water. So if you if you'd like to make maybe a 100 ml or of uh, citric acid solution, that would be 50 ml or 50 grams uh, grams and ml is the same, right? So 50 ml of uh, citric acid and 50 ml water, that will give you a citric acid solution. Okay, so we have come to the end of this class. I will be taking the basic cosmetic equipment class in module nine. I would like you to uh, watch other modules if you are yet to do so because we will start our practice soon right and i really don't want anyone to be confused kindly remember to send an email so that you can get a copy of the good manufacturing practices ebook until next time bye bye